How long have you been in the digital space? Oh gosh, um, that's a really good question. Since uh, 1998, I was working on B2B at that time. Right. Yeah. Um, and then when did you start focusing um, some thoughts and insights on mobile? That, that's a really good question. Um, mostly when I realized that the competitive insights that I was providing were uh, weakened or not as thorough because we didn't have mobile data. So I knew that I needed to move into a, a different um, opportunity where I could start understanding mobile and the effects mobile has in terms of providing solutions. So when you saw that mobile was becoming a blind spot yeah. and your perspective, um, that's when you figured that it was time. Yes. So you've been in and seen how digital marketing has started to evolve yeah. and then seen the disruptive effect of audience moving over to mobile mm -hmm. and the like. And, and also sharing the frustrations that we're seeing the eyeballs go to mobile, but we haven't seen the ad budgets exactly. follow. Because the marketers, for a variety of different reasons, um, haven't been spending and brands haven't been spending as much that's comparable to what where the audience is. And that only becomes more accelerated as we look toward the next generation of consumers. Exactly. That have literally, the first screen they looked at is a mobile device. Um, and they're coming into the marketplace. When you sit with clients and talk about your platform, mm -hmm. and you talk about the opportunities that are available this year, so 2015, right. what do you get excited about? What do you get passionate about that's happening in the mobile space from your perspective? Yeah, I think that what the most that I get excited about is being able to um, show the value of mobile, right? So how do you how do you have that conversation with a client? Most clients know that they should be in mobile. They're not in mobile. They've got a legacy system where they're uh, being um, evaluated on maybe DR KPIs, which doesn't allow them to test when you can't provide the uh, the conversion in mobile or other. So. What I see changing is that, and I hope it happens this year, is that we're going to get a better uh, way to access the information that's coming from the SDKs, the, the ability to have a, um, more like a, a, it's not a cookie, right? It's not location. It's the, the behavioral data, the information that's coming from the SDKs that's now siloed in these mobile management platforms and others. That's got to change because we need that information, we need to go further with it, and if we don't solve it now, then it's gonna get worse. Although yesterday, I, I think that we, um, I, Drew Brunig from Place IQ made a good observation, and the way that I interpreted it is that maybe IoT, and what we're doing with the Internet of Things, and creating that platform where you, everything has to connect together and you get that information, maybe that's where we start getting the mobile conversion in those platforms that we couldn't get because our platforms now are so silent. That might be it. But that's, that's it. clients don't want to talk about that, right? What they want to talk about is location. They want to talk about, well, if I use location data, how do, it, what does that mean? How do I measure it? And there's still some marketers that are, um, you know, just let me geofence. Don't talk to me about building new models with this audience. Don't talk to me about reaching them across device. Just let me do a mobile campaign and geofence and give me some sort of measurement on it. So it just depends on who you're, who you're talking to. Categories are very different. Mm -hmm. What I like talking about really is the power of mobile because for me, mobile, as a, as a researcher, as a data geek forever, it allows you to connect data sources that you haven't been able to connect to. And particularly, you've got online, offline, right? So how does my digital campaign work? Does it drive in-store? Is there results there? If you go a step further, maybe you get the CPG results, you get the sales, which is what we've been talking about here. Um, but even better is the ability to take, um, take it to other offline assets, such as out of home and radio, which has been traditionally unsexy. Everybody's like, oh, forget about it. Those channels are dying. But guess what? They're not dying. They're just getting rebirth now because we're able to take that data, the big data, figure out how to apply smart, smartly to the areas that we haven't been able to previously, you know, kind of dig into. Let's talk about that theme of rebirth. Yeah. That it ain't over till it's over. Hmm. And there's an opportunity for older media channels to, re, to retool. Yes. Does mobile, it's a leading question, yeah. does mobile help that? Yeah, no, I think mobile, mobile itself, we've said it here, um, mobile, um, mobile by itself is not 
the way we need to look at it. You know, I came from a mobile-only DSP DMP, and we realized soon on that we weren't going to make it just as a sole channel. The power of mobile is ability to glue things together. It, it allows for the rebirth. So yes, I believe entirely in the power of mobile, that just that ability to take that physical and add it to the digital. I don't know what the next one's going to be, but this one we're going to ride for a while.